بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈائی ود دی ایگزامپلس آن فور یور ٹرانسفارم اینڈ اینڈ وی اسٹارٹ ود دی بک ایگزامپلس اوکے سو اسٹارٹنگ آف ود دی فرسٹ ایگزامپل اینڈ دیٹ از ایگزامپل 4.1 example 4.1 is uh, the exponential signal it's exponential of negative a t and it's multiplied with a unit step signal u of t and the value of a is given to be zero greater than zero so which means what if a is zero uh, uh, first of all the unit step signal which means that the the left hand side of the origin has already been gone and then you have exponential of a negative a t so t is positive because the u of t so which means a is negative over here value of a is given to be positive so which means that this would be a decaying signal right so uh, wait a minute yes no problem so let me check uh, no no let me draw okay so if this is my t axis this is my x of t axis so this sort of a signal i have and we are asked to find out the fourier transform x of j omega for this signal this is unknown this is a fourier transform prayer from the previous video x of j omega x of t the fourier transform the inverse fourier transform you know it very well so coming into the formulas now so i would put the values uh over there in that formula so my x of j omega would be what this is the integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of t so x of t is this one exponential of negative a t multiplied u of t and then this is multiplied with an exponential of negative j uh, omega t and this is integrated with respect to t fine now what do you have this is only existing for the positive values of time so i could write this integration as zero to infinity exponential of negative at u of t is 1 in this case multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t now uh, what can i do is i can have again 0 to infinity i can take uh, uh, the this basis same powers that i added so i would take uh, what common a negative outside and then you have a plus j omega a plus j omega and 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 t is common with respect to t and isn't it like this a plus j omega yes it is so now what do you have is the value of integration you know it very well than me so you would have the same thing exponential of negative a plus j omega into t and you would divide it by this thing that is negative a plus j omega and 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 you have to put the the limits and the limits are the upper limit is infinity the lower limit is zero if you put infinity in this you have an exponential of negative infinity right so let me you know take it as a negative one is taken like this this negative is out, up and you have an a plus j omega right and then in the brackets if i write so you have an exponential of negative infinity and then you have a, a minus of an exponential of zero right so exponential of negative infinity is zero and exponential of zero is one so it would have a negative one and this negative one negative one will become a positive one so which means that my x of j omega for this case would come out to be a positive one divided by a plus j omega and isn't it like this it is right so i told you already that generally my Fourier transform x of j omega is a complex number and you can see over here it is a complex number a it has a real part j omega it has an imaginary part so which means that for this example we would have two plots one for the real part the other for the imaginary part mostly i told you that the the signals are considered the fourier transform is considered in the polar form which means you have a magnitude part and you have a phase part so while drawing the plot 
you have one magnitude plot and the other is the phase plot the book already has drawn it so if you have the fa the, the the magnitude of x of j omega so it is something like what like a and i will show you i will draw it this is like this this sort of a wave this sort of a wave and what is this value this value is 1 upon a this value is 1 upon a similarly if you have the 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 phase spectrum this is the magnitude spectrum okay and then if you have the phase spectrum if i write it the the phase of x of j omega so this is like this if this is a with respect to omega right this is if a positive 90 degrees and this is if your negative 90 degrees so what is the plot the plot is like this fine now how is this how is this so it would be a little time consuming and difficult to draw over here so what can you do is at this level you know very well how to use uh, matlab so in the matlab you give uh, this particular function x of j omega you give it some value of a okay you consider some positive value of a and then what do you do you draw a plot of x of j omega versus different values of omega so this is what you get this was the magnitude spectrum this is the phase spectrum the important thing from the signal and system point of view is that from seeing the magnitude spectrum you should be able to tell what is the behavior of the signal so in this case if you have a look so the lower frequencies are dominant the higher frequencies are not dominant so which means in making up of this signal exponential of negative at with uh, a positive the lower magnitude the lower frequencies are contributing more in the formation of this signal this is what the information lies in the graph is that fine okay the next is let's say now I have an exponential signal again but this time you offer negative t so in the very same i have another case okay if this was example 4.1 case number one so this is what the book hasn't mentioned is case two which i write x of t is equal to exponential of a positive at or negative at positive at yes so if this is now a positive at and u is now negative t fine and this is also for a greater than zero so now what would I have? I will have the graph like this. If this is my t axis, this is my x of t axis. So what do you have? How like u of negative t says what? That the graph is lying as a whole to the left side of the origin. To the right it's zero. An exponential of a t with a greater means a rise. So this is an exponential rise. This is your this is your function x of t and again for this function my Fourier transform x of j omega is unknown now let me one uh, let me tell you one thing as well the formula for this I told you in the beginning as well that the conditions were uh, necessary but not something like that the, the thing is that if you cannot find the Fourier transform from this formula this would not generally mean that the signal does not have a Fourier transform we would encounter many signals whose Fourier transform we cannot calculate directly by using this formula but still they have those the, the Fourier transform and we've seen the limitations of the conditions in the previous video right so that was just I need to tell coming anyways coming to this so my x of j omega would be what my x of j omega would be like this uh, now again I have the integration negative infinity to positive x of t so my x of t in this case is like this negative uh, uh, well it's a positive at and then it's a u of negative t fine and it's multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega t the integration is with respect to t 
this signal exists from where from a negative infinity to zero so i can replace the limits that is i can say from a negative infinity to zero and and i would say an exponential of a t and i know that u of negative t would be one in this particular limit so i directly multiply it with this thing an exponential of negative g omega t dt now what can i do with negative infinity to zero and I could take the base is same, so you take the, the sum of the powers. So exponential of a minus j omega. You have an a minus j omega and t is taken common and with respect to t is the integration. Now again, you know integration very well than me. The integration is with respect to t. Any other power, you take the same power, you divide it by that thing. So I would write the 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 answer over here and, and what is that so let me write it over here or would you draw the magnitude in the phase spectrum yourself yes yes you do it yourself so uh, so let me write it what this would be an exponential of a uh, minus j omega into t of course and this would be divided by an a minus j omega and you have to you have to where is the red pen there so you have to uh, put the limits as well and what are the limits they are zero and they are negative infinity so now what can i do is if i have a one upon a minus j omega i have it over here now for the limit so if you put the limit zero exponential of zero and then exponential of minus infinity so exponential of zero is what it's one and exponential of negative infinity is what it's zero so you have this thing to be one and one multiply this thing would be one again so which means i've got my final answer and my final answer is that my x of j omega for this question is one upon a minus of j omega now again i told you to to take some value of a to take some value of a and plot this function in matlab with respect to different values of omega uh, the magnitude plot as well and the phase plot as well because again it's a complex number that's it for this example okay just give me a second now what do you have now what do you have okay so the next is example 4.2 the book has named it i name it the same third part of this okay basically this is the same example but the book has named it example 4.2 and in this case now my x of t is equal to exponential of and let me just check negative a and the absolute of t negative a and d absolute of t and a is given to be zero and x of j omega is unknown so we know that if you have the absolute if you have the absolute so i if i write it over here if i am given t absolute so this could be equal to what this could be equal to negative of t for t less than zero and this is equal to positive of t for t greater than zero isn't it like this it is so now i can take my x of j omega in two parts one for t less than zero the other for t greater than zero isn't it like this it is so let me first generally write it let me write it generally first so this would be from a negative infinity to positive infinity exponential of negative a the absolute of t into exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t now depending on this absolute of t what do you have first i would take from a negative infinity to zero negative infinity to zero so in that case you would have an exponential of negative a and negative t right and this would be multiplied with negative j omega t dt then plus the next would be from zero to positive infinity and in that case you would have an exponential of negative a the t would be positive in that case and this would be multiplied with negative j omega t with respect to t so now if you see now if you see uh, this is an exponential of a t positive a positive t and the exponential of negative this 
so which means uh, this is something over here exponential of a t or this the whole thing isn't this it is and if you see this thing exponential of negative a t and this and that so this is over here isn't it so which means what which means that I can get my I can write my x of j omega directly and how do I write it directly you know from here from this the answer is 1 upon a minus j omega and from there my answer is 1 plus j omega the answer to this integration plus the answer to that integration so what would it be now a minus j omega plus a plus j omega divided by an a squared plus omega squared because uh, it would be basically minus into what uh, a square minus b square so we have the j also so j squared is minus 1 so you get this thing so which means that my final answer over here I would write it now x of j omega would equal 2a upon a squared plus omega squared this is it this is it again you can draw the plot by yourself you take some value of a you take some value of a and you give it different values of what different values of omega in the matlab though and you would get the answer although the book has drawn you know the graph so if the book has it so it uh, is uh, unnecessary to give it as a homework so let me you know draw it over here I remove well it's the same thing basically x of t uh, in that case in the third case is like this first you have an exponential rise to this side then you have an exponential decay to this side isn't it like this and this x of j omega uh, and if you see so this is only a real plot you don't have any real and imaginary okay so only one plot for x of j omega that this was a point that that's good that i draw it so x of t is like this and x of j omega this is with respect to omega this is with respect to t x of j omega is something like this only we have one plot no real no imaginary no phase no magnitude right the simple plot it is so is that fine till here it should be the next is the impulse signal and for which first i remove the board okay the next is example 4.3 and that is an impulse signal example 4.3 x of t is delta of t and x of j omega is unknown so again using that formula you know the graph right x of t means what x of t means a uh, delta of t means this is an impulse located at t is equal to zero in finite magnitude area one fine so anyways x of j omega uh, negative infinity to positive infinity right and 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 what delta of t multiplied an exponential of negative j omega t dt now you know the very important property of this impulse signal that if impulse is multiplied with any other function inside the integration limits from negative infinity to positive infinity you have what you have the answer to the integration is the value of the other function to which the impulse is multiplied that is exponential of negative j omega t at the value at which 
at which this impulse is located so which means impulse over here is located at t equal to 0 so the answer to this whole integration would be the value of this function at t equal to 0 and the value of this function at t is equal to 0 is 1 so which means for this thing you have x of j omega to be 1 and that is it for this example I don't need to draw it I don't need to draw it yes yeah, so why should I waste space what does this mean this means that each and every frequency has equal contribution in formation of this signal this is if my omega this is my x of j omega and this is one now this is one over here because the weight of the impulse was one if the weight of the impulse is two the step would be two it depends on the weight of the impulse this means that each and every frequency is making equal contribution in forming this signal delta of t again this is a real signal no imaginary part that is it that is it yes the next signal is example 4.4 example 4.4 and what does this say x of t is equal to let me check from the book it's one when the magnitude of t is somewhere less than t1 it's zero otherwise fine for this signal now my x of j omega is unknown the Fourier transform First, let me draw this signal. This is some sort of a rectangular signal. This is my t-axis. This is my x of t-axis. This is 1 if this is t1 and this is negative t1. So, what do you have now? How do you calculate it now? So, I would write that x of j omega is negative infinity to positive infinity, the value of the signal x of t exponential of negative j omega t dt. Now, this signal is existing from negative t1 to positive t1, so the Fourier transform would exist in these limits. Fine. And the value of this signal is 1 in these limits, and you have an exponential of negative j omega t. This is with respect to t. You solve this integration because I cannot solve it. You know it very well. You know it better than me. I am very weak in solving integrations. The final answer is x of j omega is 2 sine omega t1 upon omega. You, you, you solve it yourself. This implies my final answer x of j omega is 2 times sine of omega t1 divided by omega okay so this is your uh, Fourier uh, transform for this function and you can see that this is somewhat similar to a sync function similar to a sync function so I would write over here similar to a sync function so what do you have let's say this is your this is some sort of a sync function i try okay and you know the detail of a sync function okay this is again a real function only so if i write it like this this would be the the, the this would be omega upon t1 right this would be 2t1 this would be 2t1 or whatever is this value you know it the crossing would be at the crossing would be integral multiples of pi by t1 yes pi by t1 so so this first crossing would be at a pi by t1 this would be at a negative pi by t1 the second would be at a 2 pi by t1 this would be at a negative 2 pi by t1 and you know this very well than me now what do i do is what do i do is if 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 this signal is given to me and if, if it, the Fourier transform x of g omega is given and i am asked about the original signal x of t so what do i do in that case so in that case i would be considering the inverse Fourier transform relation 
And what is that? So I need to find x of t. Let me give it an, a name x hat of t. I know that x of t is the original signal, this signal I should get. But let's say I am getting any general signal x hat of t by taking the inverse Fourier transform of this Fourier transform. So, so uh, the limits are negative infinity to positive infinity. x of j omega is 2 to sine of omega t 1 upon omega and this is multiplied with exponential of j omega t with respect to t now you solve it you solve it i do not know how to solve it okay so what would you get what would you get you would get this sort of a signal the gibbs phenomena we have already studied right so this would be my x hat of t and, and what did it say that it would have this ripples ripples near the point of discontinuity ripples near the point of discontinuity the overshoot nine percent and this and that i do not need to revise it but what do we have? We have it, this sort of a function, according to what? According to the Gibbs phenomena. If we consider a finite range, then if we take it to an infinite range, right? Finite domain signal, the bandwidth of the original signal is finite. This was for some finite interval. Let me check from the book. Or whatever it is, you know this, this gives phenomena, you know it, right? For smaller values of omega or for a smaller interval, right? And then if you have it, this was, a, this was against the omega axis. So smaller omega axis, let's say you took it from here till here, so you got this sort of a function. You have it from a negative infinity to positive infinity now. If you have in finite range, you would get the, the same signal back. This would be your Tx, this would be your x of t, you would have it as a negative t1, positive t1. The exact signal by the inverse Fourier transform relation you would get if you consider the whole infinite range. If you consider some infinite range, you would have something according to the Gibbs phenomena, you would have ripples, you would have some peak value, overshoot and the discontinuity the value the, here we have discontinuity so the value of the function at the discontinuity would be equal to the average of before and after values of the discontinuity you know this all you know these all fine so the thing is anyway that for a finite duration signal the bandwidth in the frequency domain is infinite for a finite duration signal in the time domain, the bandwidth in the frequency domain is infinite and we can see it from here. This are extending at both the sides. So write it down, please. For a finite duration signal in time domain, the bandwidth in the frequency domain is infinite and that is it. That is it. Let's have the last example. Let's have the last example. And what does it say? It is the exact opposite to what we have seen over here. X of j omega is given. It's example 4.5. Example 4.5. X of j omega is given. It's 1 for omega's magnitude less than omega omega's magnitude less than some value w and it's zero otherwise that is omega's magnitude greater than w which means we have the same signal like that if this is your omega axis so so this represents my x of j omega this the fourier transform basically is given and we are asked about the original signal that is x of t. So how do we find it? We find it through the inverse Fourier transform. So my x of t 
would be equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration negative infinity to positive x of j omega exponential of positive j omega t dt d omega d omega d omega over here i wrote it wrong as well d omega okay so what do you have now so i would write a 1 upon 2 pi would be the same negative infinity to positive infinity no the limits are negative w to positive w the value is 1 and it's exponential of j omega t with respect to omega now what do you have again you have sine of omega t by pi t omega t by pi t you solve it yourself you solve it yourself it's simple exponential of uh, let me give it a try you know let me give it a try with the green pen if, if i could not solve it i would cut this part anyways so one upon two pi is this thing right then you have it omega with respect to omega so you would have an exponential of j omega t and this j t would come downwards isn't it like this and the limits you would put uh, in the function are for omega and those are plus w and minus w right so now what do you have 1 upon 2 pi exponential of j plus w t minus exponential of uh, j minus w into t and this is whole divided by a j t so isn't it representing some sort of a sine function yes so it is sine of wt yes yes this is sine of wt and i did it proper i did it proper divided by pi t i did it very well yes i did it correctly so if you have it like this it uh, you could take the t over here you could take the pi over here you could take the t over here what do you have exponential of j w t minus exponential of minus j w t this is upon j and this is the sine of uh, sine of w t yes sine of w t so what do i have i have got my x of t i have got my x of t and this is equal to sine of w t and divide by pi t and this is the answer and i deserve a clapping over here i have done the integration correct right anyways i've got my x of t again you could see this can you can see this is somewhat similar to a sync function again it's similar to a sync function i would write over here now why am i using the word similar to i will tell you similar to a sync function so the graph would be the graph would be like this the graph would be something like this again and this would continue on either side the value would be pi by omega at zero omega by pi w by pi sorry w by pi this would be w by pi the crossing would occur at pi by w 2 pi by w and this continues similarly over here negative pi by w negative 2 pi by w this is my x of t this is the t axis fine if you see you have a finite duration signal in the time domain you have an infinite bandwidth in the frequency domain if you have a finite bandwidth in the frequency domain you have an infinite bandwidth in the time domain which means the time and frequency domain are inversely related to each other this is the point you should know you should note it down with yourself this is an important point Time and frequency domain are. Uh, uh, this is another point. In the name, we would proper. We would we would name a property the duality property. It is an important property again. 
we would be studying it formally when we are studying the properties but you should know over here also that x of t and x of j omega are like this which means which means what let me tell you if x of t is a signal that has a fourier transform x of j omega so then x of j omega would be a signal in the frequency domain having the time domain signal as x of t and we have proved it right from this example from the time domain going to the frequency domain we have the same in the time domain if we have this thing in the frequency we have this thing now if we go the opposite way if in the frequency domain domain we have this thing we would have this thing in the time domain and this is what the duality property says we've seen it from this example we'll see it in a greater detail when when we are studying the properties I have one last one point I have one last point to, to cover before I finish this video so let me have some space on the board fine okay so first of all I said that this was related to sync and this was related to sync so first let me explain that point if I have a sink of theta, so this means sine of uh, pi, theta, pi theta, sine of pi theta and this is divided by pi theta, fine. So now I had x of j omega, where is it? So you have it, fine, x of j omega, I've removed that, so x of uh, j omega was something two times sine of w t1 upon omega t1 upon omega right omega t1 upon omega fine now have a look if i multiply and divide this by a t1 if i multiply and divide this by a t1 so how would it be now so now I could write as that 2t1 would come outside of course 2 times t1 and then you would have the sing function and the sing function would be what? Uh, omega t1 uh, uh, and this is the pi pi would cancel out so out, up, uh, over here you would have omega t1 and divide by so this would have a pi theta so you would have a you would have a pi remaining only over here and isn't it like this so it is fine now the next day you had your x of t you had your x of t which is written over there sine of w t divided by pi t isn't it like this it is now if i multiply and divide it by a w if i multiply and divide it by a w so what would i have now I can write it as uh, W by pi W by pi into sine of WT divided by WT right so this would be a W by pi and a sink of a sink of now what do you have you have an um, uh, you would have a WT divided by pi WT divided by pi it is it is so this was a little confusing you know but now if you you know if you you go the opposite way sink of of theta if you if this becomes your theta you go the opposite way you can understand it in a better way let me show you sink of omega t upon pi this would be equal to what sine of pi theta pi theta means pi multiplied by this thing and divided by pi theta so pi multiplied by this thing pi pi would cancel out you would have a sine of w t upon w t and isn't it what we have over here it is so now the opposite way around is simple the, the exact one was quite a little confusing the effect of varying omega varying w over here what if i change these limits of w so i give the heading the effect of varying 
W. So how would it be? Let's say this is X1. Negative W1, positive W1. X1 omega, you have an X1 of T associated. If you enlarge it, if you make these longer, this is W2, this is negative W2, this is X2 of J omega. The corresponding, what would happen, the X of T signal would compress, the peak value would go upwards. This is what would happen, the peak value X2 of J omega, the peak value would go upward, the signal would compress a little. This is for if X2 is greater than X1. This would be my X2 of T now. This would be now my X2 of T. Fine. Then what do you have again if it's increased further? If X3 is increased further, so what would you have? These would come close to each other again and of course the peak value would go upward. So let me write. If the W is increased, if W is increased, this implies what? That W by pi would increase. And W by pi is what? This is the peak value at the origin. This is the peak value at origin. So it means that if you increase the W, the W by pi, the peak value would increase. And the next is the pi by W. So pi by W is what? It's the it's the pi by w would decrease pi by w is what it's the 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 what the separation or the gap the separation or the gap and it would decrease so what happens is that the signal would compress and that is it now what uh, what can i write over here that if my w tends to infinity what if W tends to infinity? If W tends to infinity, so I could write that my X of J omega would something be like this. So this would imply what? That the signal, that my X of T, the corresponding time domain signal would compress to become an impulse signal only located at T equal to zero. This is one when my w tends to infinity that is it so that was what i was saying the the time and frequency domains are inversely related to each other which means if the bandwidth increases the bandwidth increases the single l compresses time and frequency are opposite related which means if bandwidth increases this implies that the signal compresses and similarly if the bandwidth reduces this implies that the signal expands that is it that is it i'm a little tired i was not feeling a hundred percent but i said let us record one video that is it that is it for the book examples as well see you in the next lecture maybe with the Fourier transform of periodic signals or maybe the properties i would get things in order so very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye